सो हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ पी आई बी टू फोर सेवन इन टूडेज क्लास वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द पी आई बी न्यूज फ्रॉम एट्थ टू टेंथ ऑफ फेब्रवरी टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड आई होप द प्रिपरेशन फॉर आर बी आई ग्रेट बी एग्जामिनेशन आर गोइंग वेल सो प्लीज डोंट लूज आउट योर टाइम एंड जस्ट गेयर अप योर सेल्फ फॉर द अपकमिंग एग्जामिनेशन राइट सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइज विदाउट एनी डिले विच से The Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has organized the first Y20 inception meeting of 2023 under India's G20 presidency in Guwahati in Assam. So you have to identify the incorrect statement about Y20. Remember we have discussed about Y20 earlier also Y20 is the youth wing of G20 member nations where this group discusses the issues related to the youth of the G20 member nations right. So let's talk about the news then we will come back to this question. remember it was the first y20 inception meeting for uh, under india's g20 presidency and it took place in guwahati in assam now the objective of this meeting was to reach out to the youths and uh, consult with the youths for their ideas on how we can build a better tomorrow for the youths right it was organized by ministry of youth affairs and sports headed by anurag singh thakur and remember the technical sessions and deliberation were hosted at iit guwahati iit guwahati mein technical session hue the and overall it was uh, if someone ask you that where it was organized so the answer would be guwahati right now remember these were the five themes of the meeting future of work industry 4.0 innovation and 21st century climate change and disaster risk reduction making sustain uh, sustainability as a way of life peace building and reconciliation ushering in an era of no war shared future youth in democracy and governance and health well being and sports agenda for youth now you don't have to remember word by word all these themes these are just for the basic understanding that what actually uh, on what topics the discussions were held right now talking about y20 so as i already told you it is a youth wing it is the youth wing of g20 member nation started in the year 2012 right it is the only officially recognized platform for the young people to engage with the g20 and of course it is also one of the eight official engagement groups under the g20 umbrella all right now iske bare mein zyada detail mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai y20 is uh, just another group of g20 where uh, the members the the members of group discusses about the issues of the youth right now coming back to the question you have to identify incorrect statement about g20 so it was started in 2020 so the first one is only incorrect the correct answer should be option a because it was started in the year 2012 and not 2020 so option a is the correct answer guys moving ahead to question number 2 which ministry has conceptualized the yuva sangam initiative under ek bharat shreshth bharat to build close ties between the youth of northeastern region and the rest of the country remember this yuva sangam initiative has been conceptualized by ministry of education the objective as already mentioned in the question is to build close ties between the youth of north eastern region and rest of the country under the spirit of ek bharat shreshth bharat right the focus of this program is on conducting exposure tours right exposure tours will be conducted uh, of youth between the eight north eastern states and the rest of the country and this initiative will provide an experience of various facets of life life like development landmarks recent uh, achievements and youth connect in the host state right now remember during this uh, uh, during their visits during their exposure visits if i say precisely during their exposure visits the the students will have a multi dimensional exposure under five p's of paryatan which is tourism parampara which is traditions pragati which is development pradyogik which is technology and paraspar sampark which is people to people connect all right so that is all about yuva sangam initiative and yeah which ministry has conceptualized it it is ministry of education headed by dharmendra pradhan option e is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 3 which ministry has signed an mou with digital green under ppp framework for developing a national interactive digital platform to strengthen the ex extension system now first of all what is the meaning of extension system remember it is a system under which an agent under which an agent who is who has certain experience in the agriculture is appointed by the government or the organization or any agency and this agent provides help to the farmers in you know increasing their yields 
in seed technology in the post harvesting technology etc right and the agent so appointed is known as extension worker the agent jo appoint kiya jata hai usko hum kya bolte hain extension worker bolte hain right so now let's come back to the question uh, come to the news remember this mou has been signed between ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare and digital green under ppp and under this mou they will develop a national interactive digital platform so that we can uh, strengthen the extension system an extension system i already told you yahan pe likha hua hai so you guys can read from your pdf now what is this in national interactive digital platform so remember it will be a portal that will host a digital library of curated multi format multilingual content regarding agriculture right and this content will help the extension workers to access and deliver curated content to farmers on time all right and remember it will be launched within 6 months 6 mahine mein isko launch kar diya jayega it will and it will definitely help the vast net network of extension workers for agriculture horticulture fisheries livestock and rural livelihood missions through certified online courses basically extension workers ko ye support karega and those extension workers will in turn provide support to the farmers to the people who are uh, uh, engaged in the area of horticulture fisheries livestock etc theek hai so that is all about it and which ministry is this it is ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare headed by narendra singh tomar option b is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 4 prime minister modi has laid down the foundation stone of south india's first industrial corridor project which is tumakuru industrial township as part of national industrial corridor program so the question is very simple in which southern state this industrial township is located tumakuru is a district of karnataka i hope you all uh, know this and therefore the correct answer must be karnataka right but before coming to the answer let's read out the news ki news kya hai actually mein so prime minister modi has laid the foundation stone for south india's first industrial corridor project in which is tumakuru industrial township which i told you is in karnataka now this township will uh, spread over 8500 acres of land under chennai bengaluru industrial corridor cbic and it will be developed in three phases by central government and central government will be developing it through national industrial corridor development and implementation trust and government of karnataka and the government of karnataka will be developing it through karnataka industrial area development board right now remember the target industrial sector of tumakuru uh, township will be the food products textile and apparel electronics auto and auto components pharmaceuticals chemicals engineering general manufacturing etc and it will be connected with mumbai chennai national highway bangalore international airport tumakuru railway station and bangalore port all right now talking about national industrial corridor development program so the objective is to increase the share of manufacturing in the gdp of the country under which 32 industrial uh, green field industrial smart cities under 11 industrial corridors are being developed under this program so if someone ask you that how many industrial corridors are being developed the answer would be 11 and how many green field industrial smart cities are being developed answer would be 32 right and four such smart industrial cities have already been completed which are dholera in gujarat shendra bitkin in maharashtra vikram udyog puri in madhya pradesh and industrial uh, integrated industrial township in greater noida which is of course in uttar pradesh all right so that is all about this news and where this industrial township is located so option a karnataka is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 5 ministry of environment forest and climate change will be organizing the first g20 environment and climate sustainability working group meeting in bangalore karnataka under india's g20 presidency so which of the following are the priority areas of this meeting remember the priority areas of this meeting are arresting land degradation accelerating ecosystem restoration and enriching biodiversity promoting a sustainable and climate resilient blue economy right and encouraging resource efficiency and circular economy so these three are the priority areas of this meeting and hence the correct answer will be option e all of the above and other two important things which you have to remember in this news is the ministry and the location that is it the ministry the location and the priority areas are the, are the only three things that you have to remember in this particular news right option e is the correct answer 
यहाँ पे भी वही तीन चीजें लिखी हैं जो कि आपको पढ़नी है क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट अबाउट फंड ऑफ फंड फॉर स्टार्टअप स्कीम्स नाउ दिस इज नॉट अव स्कीम दिस इज नॉट अ न्यू स्कीम इट वॉज लॉन्च इन दर टू राइट एंड इट इज इन न्यूज बिकॉज अ पार्लियामेंट्री रिप्लाई हैज बिन सबमिटेड ड्यूरिंग द बजट सेशन सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द फंड ऑफ फंड स्कीम रिमेंबर फंड ऑफ फंड स्कीम्स फॉर स्टार्टअप सो एज द नेम से इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू प्रोवाइड कैपिटल टू द स्टार्टअप राइट सो टू प्रोवाइड मच नीडेड बूस्ट टू द इंडियन स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम एंड एनेबल एक्सेस टू डोमेस्टिक कैपिटल सो बेसिकली कैपिटल बिल्डिंग कैपिटल प्रोवाइडिंग इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस स्कीम लॉन्च इयर टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटीन इनिशियल कॉर्पस इज टेन थाउजेंड करोर Now what happens under this is that this fund directly uh, does not provide financial assistance to the startup. Instead, this fund provides uh, the fund to the SEBI registered alternative investment fund, which are also known as daughter funds. And these alternative investment funds provides the financial assistance to the Indian startups, right, through equity and equity linked instruments. The nodal implementing agency is SIDBI, Small Industry Development Bank of India. Duration की अगर हम बात करें, so the contribution under this under this scheme is being provided over the 14th and 15th finance commission cycle. That is up to financial year 2026. And remember, the AIFs, the alternative investment funds, are required to invest at least two times of the amount committed by the scheme in the startup, right? उनको दो गुना तो कम से कम देना ही पड़ेगा उनको उससे कम में काम नहीं चलेगा सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस स्कीम नाउ यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इट वाज अप्रूव्ड एंड एस्टैब्लिश इन 2016 सही बात है इट हैज कॉर्पस ऑफ 10,000 करोड़ कंट्रीब्यूशन अंडर इट इज बीइंग प्रोवाइडेड ओवर फोर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन सिड इज द नोडल एजेंसी राइट एंड दिस फंड डायरेक्टली मेक इन मेक्स इन्वेस्टमेंट इन बेनिफिशरी स्टार्टअप नो it gives funds to aifs and these aifs in turn give support to the startups so option e is the incorrect statement which is the correct answer to this question <coughs> and guys <coughs> i apologize once again for my uh, voice because again throat is not working well so thoda sa awaaz mein abhi aisa hi rahega so you guys have to manage now let's come to question number 7 where has the national commission for women Organize workshop on gender responsive governance for elected women representatives (MLAs) from seven southern and northeastern states under She is a Change Maker program. So where this was conducted, that is the question. And is me zada apko again pande ki zarurat nahi hai. Just remember it was conducted by National Commission for Women. Now what is this workshop on gender responsive governance? ठीक है for elected women representatives under which program? Under She is a Change Maker program of NCW. Where in Vishaka Patnam in Andhra Pradesh? Now, what was the objective? To sensitize and assist the elected women representatives, especially MLAs, to build on their identified strengths. How they can build on their identified strengths? That was the uh, basic agenda of this workshop, right? It was. <coughs> 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 Sorry. It was conducted for seven southern and northeastern states, which are Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, and Assam. And it was organized by NCW in collaboration with National Gender and Child Centre of Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. Okay. So that is all. And where this workshop took place? So it took place in Vishaka Patnam. Option B is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number eight then, which is about Garima Grah. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has set up twelve Garima Grah shelter home for transgender persons on pilot basis in nine states and UTs under the Smile Scheme. What is Smile Scheme? Support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and and, and enterprises. I have discussed this scheme so many times, so you guys can uh, watch from uh, those videos. And अभी जब revision session करेंगे तब भी हम Smile को दोबारा से discuss करेंगे. Don't worry. so that is why i have not taken the smile scheme in detail it is support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprises where the government is providing support to the transgenders and the beggars right so which of the following are amongst these states or uts where uh, the 12 garima grah shelter home for transgender persons has been set up so let's talk about it the nine states or uts are delhi odisha tamil nadu bihar maharashtra Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Gujarat, and Rajasthan. And yes, you have to remember the name of these states and UTs, right? 
you cannot ignore them now remember in these uh, garima grah the the, trans, the the transgenders are provided with the safeguards of their rights and and it protects them from their from any kind of atrocities it ensures shelter home with facilities of lodging and boarding clothing recreation medical and counseling it empowers the transgender person through skill development skill upgradation programs and facilitate employment and also it provides a safe and inclusive environment for their holistic development now again word to word you don't have to remember just remember it is for providing safeguard uh, to the transgender persons karima gray okay so which are the uh, which are <coughs> which are which of the following are amongst the states or ut so these are west bengal is there uh, maharashtra is there madhya pradesh is not there delhi odisha is there so 1 to 4 and 5 will be the correct answer option d moving ahead to the questions in short which do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description question number 9 how much amount of severan green bonds are proposed to be issued by central government in the current financial year for mobilizing resources for green infrastructure projects very direct question 16000 crore is the correct answer second sco young scientist conclave was recently inaugurated in bangalore karnataka do remember the location which of the following were the thematic areas of this conclave so remember all these five were the thematic areas i will not waste your time in reading all these options so all of the above is the correct answer and you have to remember just read out once which were the thematic areas of second sco young scientist conclave which took place in bangalore in karnataka Question number eleven. This is an important question. During twenty one twenty two, India received foreign remittances of approximately ninety billion dollars, which was the highest ever inward remittances. And this year, the hundred billion dollar touch has been touched. Identify the correct descending order of country wise share of top five countries in inward remittances in the year twenty 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 one. The question is about twenty 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 one, not twenty one twenty two. So remember. the highest remittance was in usa followed by uae then it was uk then it was singapore then it was saudi arabia right so if we talk about that is descending order the correct answer will be option b okay question number 12 according to production data of food, food and agriculture organization corporate statistical database india is the highest milk producer that is ranked at first position in the world contributing how much percent of global milk production in the year 21 22 so it was 24% of the global milk production option d is the correct answer and guys the last question for today which think tank has released a report titled making india a global powerhouse on farm machinery industry so which think tank has released this report so it has been released by ncaer national council for applied economic research option c is the correct answer All right, guys. So that is all for today's session, and I apologize for the regular for the regular distortion in the video because of my voice. Uh, I hope that next video तक मैं ठीक हो जाऊँगा. Till then, please cooperate. And yeah, I will see you in the next session on Wednesday. Goodbye. Take care. And God bless.